Okay, moment of truth. Let's see if it works. Okay. Thousand yen remaining. Looks like it's good. Let's see what happens when we tap out. Alright, see if this works. Yes. Success! Like that. 240 yen for public transport. Yes, balance. Nice. Working well. And then you can see a history of all the journeys I've taken so far. Okay, I'm going to literally reload my Suica Digital on the run. So let's add money. Uh, minimum is 1000 Japanese yen. Yep. And let's press add. And okay. Facial rig. Done. It's done. There you go. It took about three seconds and then it added. There you go, it even showed me it was $10.48 Australian uh, dollars for 1,000 Japanese yen. Morning everyone from the Bridge Hotel in Osaka and I just wanted to talk a little bit about the money situation again because I feel like it's an important topic coming to Japan. So um, we have been traveling around so far on the Pasmo passport kind of tourist card um, that uh, it's available to foreigners. You can't get the Pasmo or Suica card at the moment in Japan because of the semiconductor shortage. There are limitations of course, you can only um, uh, top it up with cash at one of the vending machines. Um, but it is useful because you can use the public transport and also purchase snacks and things from outlets that accept either Suica, uh, Pasmo or other IC type cards. You can buy the Pasmo card initially with credit cards so that's quite helpful. We then switched over a couple of days ago to the Kansai One Pass. This is slightly more useful because um, even though you can only purchase this using cash, there is uh, no limit on this. Whereas the Pasmo Passport and the Suica Welcome Cards, there is a 28 day limit. So after 28 days, this will expire and you won't get a refund on the amount remaining on this card. Whereas this one lasts indefinitely, so you can use this again when you come back to Japan another day. Uh, the downside of this is that you have to buy this with cash and you can only top it up with cash as well. Uh, but this can be used all over Japan as you can with Pasmo Passport and Suica Welcome. Um, today I'm going to actually try using uh, this Suica using my Apple iPhone wallet. Uh, this was a tip sent to me kindly by one of our viewers um, after watching one of my earlier vlogs. So this is really easy to add. Um, and you just go to your Apple wallet, I'll just show you now, your wallet app, and you can actually, you can actually add um, one of these cards here, so you can add um, a travel card down here, so Ikoka, Pasmo, or Suica in Japan, and then say if you want to add Pasmo now, and you um, just continue um, your face ID or whatever, and add your um, Apple Pay to it, or you can transfer an existing card if you have that already. So that, I think that could be potentially quite useful because you can just tap on your phone onto the public transport or buying snacks and things like that at the outlets that uh, support Suica or Pasmo or other IC cards, which is pretty much everywhere really on public transport in Japan. So I haven't actually tried this yet. I will try today the Suica card on my Apple iPhone. And if that works, I'll get joined also either by a Suica card or a Pasmo card for Apple iPhone. And that will do away with uh, using these cards which, of course, is a bit of a hassle. You're going to take it out of your wallet or your handbag or whatever and then tap it on, whereas this will be on your person most of the time and you can just tap it on. But apparently this also works if you run out of battery for your phone. So I will try that today too by just switching my phone off and just walking through and tapping my phone on uh, when it's bricked or out of charge and see whether that works too. Um, one more thing too, while we're here, we, I'll talk about the cash situation. So last night I talked a little bit about um, exchanging money into Japanese yen. Um, I've found so far the three types of um, ways to pay so far have been credit card, which is accepted at most sort of medium to high end restaurants. Uh, some places don't accept credit card, for example, some tourist destinations, sort of street food. In that case, you will have to withdraw cash or use um, one of the IC cards available, as I talked about earlier. 
Getting cash out into Japanese yen is uh, a whole subject in itself. You can either take your own currency from home and exchange it on one of the machines around town. Um, I've seen a few around that don't offer a great rate. So the current exchange rate from Australian dollars, for example, to Japanese yen. The official rate is sitting around 95.4 Japanese yen. So if you can get anywhere close to that, then you're doing really well. So last night um, I checked the machines, the exchange machines. They were sitting around 83 to 85 yen, which is much lower than the official rate. Whereas if you were to withdraw from an ATM, which I did last night, um, I took out 100,000 Japanese yen, which is the equivalent of around that thousand dollar mark using the current exchange rate. I paid $1,100 for that amount, which is about uh, 91 Japanese yen to every Australian dollar. So that's very close to the official rate uh, and much better than the 83 to 85 Japanese yen to one Australian dollar at those machines. But I think personally the best way to purchase anything is actually with a credit card because then you get a very good exchange rate. For example, uh, at the Pom Pom Purin Cafe you saw earlier in one of my videos, um, we got an exchange rate of 92.5 Japanese yen to every Australian dollar and that's probably the, the best exchange I've gotten so far. Uh, in this country and I've checked my credit card statement they're all sitting around 92 Japanese yen to uh, every Australian dollar so uh, in terms of good value number one credit card number two um, the cats walking on the roof number two um, probably withdrawing from the ATM with a 3.5 percent surcharge um, and then number three exchanging it from one of those machines you see around town with foreign currency into Japanese yen and if you can, uh, these IC cards are good too. And of course, now that they're available on the Apple iPhone wallet, even better. But of course, I'll try the iPhone wallet today and uh, let you know how we go. And there's the cat that interrupted my vlog, just uh, walking on the roof there. Actually, I think it was this one here, just on top of us. You just see it there. Okay, moment of truth. Let's see if it works. Thousand yen remaining. Looks like it's good. Let's see what happens when we tap out. All right, see if this works. Yes. Success. Like that. Two forty yen for public transport. Shinsei Bashi to Shinosaka Station, new balance 760 yen, nice. Well that's made me very happy that the Suica on my Apple Wallet is working fine, problems. Uh, and I didn't even have to open up Apple Wallet or double click the side button either, so that worked just fine. I'm now going to try it with my phone off, uh, simulating that the phone is out of charge or bricked. And let's see if that works as well. Mm, Japanese Krispy Kreme. Alright, so I just went into the Shinkansen office here at Shin Osaka to book um, three more legs of our journey. That is from here to Hiroshima, and then from Hiroshima to Kyoto, and then from Kyoto to uh, back to Tokyo on our last day. Uh, from Hiroshima to Kyoto, we have to stop back here at Shin Osaka. I tried to use the vending machines, but uh, they are just so complicated. You can use the website to make adjustments and reserv reservations, but uh, you have to have purchased the original JR Rail Passes from the official JR Rail Pass site. But because we bought it from Kluke, we have to either use the machines or uh, go to the JR booking office to make those reservations, which we did. And uh, yeah, I'm glad we did because those machines are actually quite complicated for multiple journeys. And because there aren't very many bins in public places, uh, most of the food outlets that you buy the food from will accept your rubbish for you. All right, here's a tip. So you can use your JR Rail Pass for some of the metro lines around the cities in Japan. For example, here in Osaka, you can use it for the Osaka Loop Line and also the JR uh, Tokaido Sanyo Line that we're about to board right now. In fact, it's probably worth uh, using your JR Pass for any station that has the word JR or the initials JR in front of the station. 
or whichever line has JR in front of the line, probably worth trying a JR pass. All right, so thank you, JR pass. Like I said, some of these train stations work. So let's step it in. And we are good. Free travel. Thank you very much, JR. Well, here we are at Yodobashi Omera. Pretty big square here. See a Ferris wheel there. Very close to Osaka Station City. Amazing place. <laughs> Alright, back to the Hankyu Osara Umeda station with the cool red trains. Okay, so the next test is to brick my phone. That's to turn my phone off. I've got a balance of 760 yen on the Suica card. Okay, turning my phone off. Okay, slide the power off. Done. Okay, so we have the bricked phone. It's definitely off. Alright, let's tap and see. Okay, but phone doesn't work, nothing, so I'm going to have to turn my phone on. Well, unfortunately the um, bricked phone didn't work, it's a ticket, well, at least now we know. Uh, I've got on the train once I've turned the phone back on. Are oh, these trains cool? Okay, turn my phone back on. Yes, balance. Nice. Working well. And then you can see a history of all the journeys I've taken so far. Okay, I'm gonna literally reload my Suica Digital on the run. So that's add money. Uh, minimum is 1,000 Japanese yen. Yep. And let's press add. And okay. Facial rig. Done. It's done. There you go. It took about three seconds and then it added, there you go, it even showed me it was $10.48 Australian uh, dollars for 1,000 Japanese yen.